there are a couple of tests to figure out in what state a person's heart is. But for today's video, we're going to be talking about the 24-hour halter, mainly because I'm going to get that test today. So, let's do this. Coming right up. So hey y'all, Amen here, and you're watching Heart Limits, a channel that talks about everything heart related. So today, we are here at the Cardio Centrum Ludwigsburg Bietigheim. So basically, this is where I'm gonna get my 24 hour heart holder. So, let's do this. So now I'm in the waiting room. Since it felt a bit awkward to actually show how they placed this thing, I'm gonna be showing it to you at home. So now I'm home and I actually have the 24 hour halter technically on me underneath this shirt right now, all right? So what you're gonna find is the halter, which technically is made out of three parts. So first of all is actually the electrodes. So usually it has an adhesive and it has some metal components that it can get the electrical activity of the heart so we know what's actually happening with the heart, right? So with this device that I have, I actually have three, right? So one right here, one right here, and one right here. Now to be honest, depending on what type of device, which country you're from, I guess kind of could be one of the reasons as well, there's actually a different number of electrodes that are attached. So when I was in France, I had a device which had about five to eight electrodes stuck on me, but with this one, it just has three. So that's the first part, all right? Next is that it has this thing, which is technically lead, or you could say the wire, which connects the electrode to third part, which is the monitor. So this monitor is something that you should technically not really touch. It's something that's just there, and cool enough with this one, uh, the monitor that I actually got here in Germany. It's pretty cool. It has the time. The thing is, the reason why people wear these 24-hour halters is because the doctor wants to see how you are in your daily routines. When you think about what a halter really is for, it's actually a slightly somewhat more advanced form of an EKG or as some people call the ECG. Uh, just to clarify, people are confused with these two things. They think it's something different, but actually it's just ECG because it's in the English name and it's EKG because it's in the German name. So technically it's the exact same thing, okay? So what it does is it records your heart electrical activity and they can see if there are any irregularities, there are any inconsistencies with how your heart beats and everything. So this is actually perfect for doctors to see if you know you have certain complaints or there are certain symptoms that he's seen in previous tests it can kind of really clarify and help the doctor figure out what to do with let's say medications what to do with what you should stay away from what to do with how to keep yourself more calm, maybe increase a dosage of a better blocker so your heart rate doesn't go up. You know, there, there's a couple of things the doctor can actually do and prescribe after with this test. And of course, to be honest, one day might not feel that long to actually get a whole grasp of everything. So there's actually times where the doctor might actually say, all right, we're gonna let you have 48, maybe even all the way up to two weeks halter on you. Of course, it's gonna be so inconvenient but it gives the doctor a clearer and better glance or glimpse. I guess glance and glimpse is the same thing. Anyway, a better picture of actually what's going on inside your body depending on certain factors that happen to you, right? And because it's quite important to know what specifically you did at that specific time, it's actually important to have a sort of diary. So you write down what you did at that specific time so that in some way the doctor can correlate, oh, so your heart rate went up at this time. 
because let's say you exercised a bit or uh, you drank water or something right so with this paper I'll give you a simple gist so it's all in German so you wouldn't understand but I translated it in English because I don't really understand German as well so first of all you have the time of day second is what have you done third is did complaints arise and which specifically and lastly what medication did you take so mainly with these four things already kind of gives a decent enough idea of for the doctor what you did at that specific moment in time all right when you wear a halter there are certain things that you need to be careful of number one is water and excessive sweating which is technically the same thing since it has to do with water so the device is technically not waterproof of course if you get the halter devices which usually not just 24 hours those that are longer those are quite waterproof but this one specifically the 24 hour one usually isn't waterproof and the thing is when there is water that gets into the electrodes what happens is the reading is actually not that accurate anymore and at times it doesn't work so while I was here I mentioned that I, what if I do some sports and what if it comes off so for that reason they gave me three extra ones so I'm like that's pretty cool uh, I, I still don't think I might do a sport because of the hassle of you know the, the, think about it the location of this thing it's gonna keep hitting me. Let's say I play volleyball or tennis or something. It's just gonna keep moving around everywhere. And what if the ball hits this, you know? That's just very inconvenient. So I just technically decided maybe I just don't do some sports. Maybe at home I can, you know, lift a little weights, not too heavy, of course, and make sure that I don't sweat too much. So at least I still have some kind of workout, right? Also, keep in mind that certain areas of high voltage and certain electronic devices could actually also affect how well this halter records stuff. So if ever you plan to have an MRI, make sure to inform the technician and let them know that they have to switch it off at that moment in time to the MRI and then turn it back on, alright? And if you're always on your cell phone, it's actually also pretty bad for this little device. So try your best to keep it as far as possible from you if you can. And just to simplify, actually it's better if you don't use your cell phone. Also, you'd be surprised, maybe even those electric razors and electric toothbrushes could actually also in some way affect the reading. So, you know, certain electronic devices just try to stay away from it. I guess you could even call a vacuum cleaner and all these other stuff, electronic devices. And I guess... Anything with a strong magnet is bad and all, so I think I shouldn't actually be near my computer, which is kind of bad. And I think my camera is an electronic device, so maybe I should go pretty far away. <laughs> anyway, whatever. So I think it's not really whatever now that I think about it. So yeah, I'll try to keep it short then anyway. So once again, a man here, and you're watching Heart Limits. Now, don't worry, don't be scared. Having a 24-hour halter is something that's non-invasive. It doesn't hurt at all. The only risk is maybe you might get some skin irritation because of the adhesive on the electro. And that's basically something that you don't really need to worry about. All right? So, once again, see ya. Woo! I can't really stay near this camera or my computer, so... Yeah, I guess.